our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Type uh, from 1979. Oh, wow. There you go. I like it already. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Here is the song. Waff go rave. Let's do it. I was walking down the road the other day when I hear a little youth man say, him say, you know see me situation, <laughs> me don't have no accommodation, me have to sign on at the station at six in the evening, me said me life got no meaning, I just living without feeling, still, me have to make a race cause me come off the edge and me want to go rave. Me want to go rave. I was walking down the road another day when I hear another youth man say, him say, I don't walk for no pittance. I don't draw them assistance. Me used to run a little rocket But what? The police them did stop it And the hard was to have it Still, me have to make a race Cause me come off age And me want to go rave Well, I was walking down the road yet another day When I hear another youth man say him said, me have to pick a pocket, yeah man, take a wallet from a jacket, me have got to do it real crabby, and if I lock it, me have to pop it, and if I see if me have got crack it, or bust it with me hatchet, but me have to make a race cause me come off age, and me want to go rave. There we go, 6.30. All right, that was song numero uno. I, I laughed because you went to go get the lyrics. <laughs> and the lyrics the lyrics are basically uh, transliterated patois. Basically. So what so is the point? <laughs> so sorry has no freaking idea. Yeah, but I said from the beginning I didn't care. I wasn't going to look at that. I, all I yeah, wanted you're going to be in your imaginary music. weed with your imaginary hammock. Yeah, actually, but it changed. I wasn't on hammock. It just didn't have that hammock vibe. It did have the, the vibe of like walking through like some city streets. Not like city city, but like, like you know where like the touristy parts. Pro- I've never been to Jamaica. You're going to take me at some point. But like I, what I imagine, like the touristy streets that are like nece- cars don't necessarily go down. They're probably selling like vendors and stuff, and the music is going, and people are like doing a little dancing to get you to go into their thing, and like it's very chill. Some oxtail cooking over there. We got some 
<laughs> oh, that was the kind of the vibe People that I dancing got. dancing to get you to go into their store? Yeah, you know, like with the music. The music's going and they're kind of like, come on in here. What's you are ridiculous. You know, I, I believe that it's like that. That's ridiculous. Laugh what you, laugh that what shit you ain't want. like that, bro. What? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> it's not like that. What it's do you just, mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah, do Americans do that? They just shoot people at the at the uh, at the at the edge of their their uh, the door to their store because like that's a stereotype of Americans. We're just shooting everybody. Else. Like that's how ridiculous it is. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we're a very musical people, but it's not like people are walking down the street every day. Like, holy shit, I'm gonna I'm well, gonna go to that mechanic. Because that guy's a better dancer. Like that's not how Jamaicans no, think. No, not like that. Like it's Weirdo. actually vendors for the tourists. The you know, like that guy that sells the um, sh- t-shirts on the side of the road by the yeah. Great I know Falls? you're talking about. I know I, you're talking about. It's kind of like that. Nah, he he'd get looked at in Jamaica the same way he gets looked at over here. Well, actually, I nah, very much people enjoy would be like, "Fool, fool, boy, get out the road. Come out, come out to the really? road." Really? Oh, no. Yeah. What do you mean, get out of the really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah stop yeah. dashing my dreams. Yeah, <laughs> Jamaica's not. <laughs> that's not what you think it is. Okay, all right, here we go. Well, I'm not going to buy off a vendor that's not going to do some dancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exa- spoken like a true colonialist. <laughs> I want some <laughs> Dance no- for me, Negro. No, come on. Stop it. No, what, are you, what are you doing here? It's a walk. Come on. Hey, yeah, okay. All right, so you, so you know what? If I go and I find somebody dancing, I'm going to take a little video and put it up on uh, Instagram for you guys. Someday. Shout I out. myself a dancer. Shout out to Rigo. So I, he says, I was, I was walking down the road. Uh, the, the, when I hear a little youth man say, okay, a little right there would be little. Youth man, that would yeah, be... Yeah, like a young man, a little young man. Yeah, Honestly, like a young teenager, yeah. Him singing it was way easier to understand than, than reading it. I agree. Lyrics. Yeah. I agree. I like, him say, so him say means he said or he says. Yeah. You know, it's in a situation. There's a good... Which would be, don't you... You notice there's a situation. Well, no, he says, you know, see me situation. What? So he's, he's saying, don't you see the situation I'm in? Okay. See what he's saying when yeah. he says, you know, see me situation? That's a question. Okay. Me don't have no accommodation. Okay. Right? So the first guy he talks to me after signing at the station, you know, to get help or whatever, whatever. At six in the evening, the same life got no meaning. I'm just live without feeling. So right here... He's saying this guy, he's got no accommodation. The guy's down on his luck. He feels sorry for himself. But, you know, he has to go out to the, basically, to the to the workplace to get work till 6 in the evening. You know, it's it's per mm-hmm. diem type work. And, but then it gets to the free course that's, he goes to the course that says, still me have a make a raise. Like, life is yeah. difficult, but I've come of age, right? See, come, come of age, I may want to go over it. So, he wants to strike out on life, live that type of situation. Mm-hmm. So he has to deal with the bad economic situation he's in, etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the second guy. Wait, wait, what, what, do you, what does he mean by strike a rave? I thought it was go to a party. Well, a rave here is a party, but for him, it's just living a good life, basically. Okay. So he's, you know. But I will say, I will say. Yes, we're still in, Christians. In America, <laughs> in America. If you're if you're not in a good situation, at least my mentality has always built been you can like sit back, make a plan, and say, if I dedicate myself to X Y Z thing, I'm not going to be in this situation in a year. Mm-hmm. In Jamaica, it wasn't necessarily like that, and there are other countries where it's not really? necessarily like that. Where like if you're down, like you're down, and the odds of you overcoming that and skipping. You know, to on on the social strata is not like that, especially if you're not a connected person. Like a lot of these countries, a lot of it depends. People call it corruption. You call it whatever you want, but a lot of it depends on who you know. And if you're just a regular anonymous person and you're not very high on the social ladder in Jamaica, the chances of you getting out of that social ladder are very very minimal. Wow. Very minimal. Where in America, it's challenging, but pretty much. From my vantage point and the vantage point, I mean, and obviously some of this is, you know, the kind of family I came from because, I mean, you see my family, like right. everybody that's in my family is like, yeah. on, especially on the Jamaican side, are extremely high performers when we come over here. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's because it's a certain a certain kind of mentality. Like we had a Jamaican work ethic with, a, with an American 
idea of an opportunity. And when you put those two together, they, they become very successful over here. But if you don't have connections to get to the states and have a baseline to the states, you know, like my mother had because she was a registered nurse with a, a lot of experience in a crazy health education, the, the prospects are very low for you. So when he's saying like, He's basically living out, and, and notice he's like no accommodation, which again is people are going to interpret this however they want, but there's certain mindsets where if you look at the government and you say the primary role of the government is to take care of me, is to take care of people, then you're going to engage with a financial struggle one way. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the government as the only role of the government is to ensure that my rights are not violated. That's a different idea. Yep. So if I'm in a bad situation, my only thing about the government is, okay, I'm going to fix this. Just make sure nobody can say my way when I fix this problem. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're conditioned, if you have the social conditioning, and a lot of people in the country have that, that they truly believe that the, the responsibility of the government is to take care of you. So when you're in a bad situation, the first thing he talks about is, he doesn't have the right accommodations from the government. Oh, he's talking about the government? Yeah, you know, see me situation. You see me now, I'm no accommodation. I mean, if it's signing at the station. Those are all government distributed, oh. you know, whatever. So, and, and you know, it, it does happen. That does happen when you're in those kinds. So those kind of those kind of things work together to help people remain poor and say it that way. Oh, wow, okay. Now, the second guy he runs into... Is not like that. The second guy he runs into is what you call the hustler. So he's going around and he says, "Me not work for no pittance. So I'm not gonna work for. I'm not gonna do minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that." So he says, "Me not, me not draw them assistance." So he he's like, "I don't want. I'm not gonna work minimum wage, and I'm not gonna work off the government." He, mm -hmm. he says, I, "I draw no assistance." Me used to run a little racket, so a racket, racketeering. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Off the record shit. But why? The police come to stop it. So he could, oh, you know, the police, police came and shut it down, right? Still may have to make a raise, come and come up here, Jeremy, we'll have to go for a raise. So he's saying, oh, well, I'm going to come up with another hustle because his attitude hasn't changed toward minimum wage or government help. So he's just going to do another kind of hustle that then pushes him, you know, would presumably push him into more serious type of crime. Mm hmm. Right, because once you do one crime and you get a record for it, then the chances of your recidivism you increase exponentially. Can, yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, and then the third verse I thought was really really fascinating when he ran into the third guy. So the third guy says, "Me have to pick a packet, take a wallet from my jacket." So he's a pickpocket. I was going to say, is that a pickpocket? So this guy, <laughs> this guy, the first guy was kind of like. You know, a card shark, maybe dominoes on this illegal gambling. Mm -hmm. This third guy is a pickpocket. He's jamming people up. He's taking people's money, that type of thing. Yep. And and he basically says, I don't care if I have to shoot somebody, I'm taking his stuff. And so you have three people who are on different levels of despair due to their economic situation. So you can look at it as three different people, or you can look at it as one person who got worse and worse and worse as time went on. So when you first met this person, he was okay with doing the, oh. the menial job, and then, you know, depending on the government. He was, compl he was fine with complaining that the government wasn't helping enough and then doing this menial per diem job. But then you run into him like a year or two later. He's like, man, fuck the government. I don't care about the government or the menial job. I'll just do a little racket here. and I'm not going to hurt nobody, but I'm going to make more money than normal. Will the police come and jam him up? So then his attitude doesn't change. So now, instead of just doing regular hustling, he's going to go out and actually jam people up and rob people. Because his opportunities, now that he's got a record, are reduced significantly. So... It seems like a very, very simple... That's interesting, too, because you would think that you would get caught less being a pickpocket right? than if you tried to do, like, some sort of, you know, some sort of racket. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. You would get caught less because, unfortunately... I mean, the cops say all the time. The but, majority of the time, they don't no, get in there Jamaica, to No, in Jamaica, there's not a lot of, like, give me your chain or whatever. Like, a robbery will usually result in you dying. No way. Because if you have a gun... 
and the police find you, they're going to kill you. There's none of this, like, Miranda rights and all that stuff. Like, if oh. it's out that you're a gunman and you got a gun out there and you're jamming people up, you're not going to make it to trial. Wow. So, I remember I was visiting my dad one time. That was all over the radio. There was, like, one dude with a gun. And I'm like, yo, the whole country knows about this one dude. And my brother was like, bro, this state is, like, half the size of, you know, oh my God. Florida. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, not yeah. even Texas. Forget Texas. It's like, 50 Jamaicans can fit into Texas. So... Like, yeah, like, usually that's why he said, like, I don't care about shooting. Like, usually those robberies end up in. And it's crazy because in New York, like, the, the dudes that were quickest to shoot you in the gang were almost always Jamaican. Really? 100%. Shooters, the people that would shoot you, the people would cut you, like, almost always Jamaicans in the gang. That's why Brooklyn was such a nightmare. Well, how come you guys got such a stereotype of being chill? Well, it depends on who you're around. Like, if you listen to, like late 90s early 2000s rap anytime the jamaican gets involved immediately there's gunshots in the back of the so the stereotype down there you know over like that's that's one of the things i did to keep myself like not violent with people was i didn't let people know i was jamaican because if people assumed you were jamaican they would ratchet up the violence because they thought you were gonna you were gonna take it there oh my gosh so so this last kid is like yo I'm going to rob people. That's why he said, like, yo, if I got to kill somebody, I'll kill somebody. I don't care. That's what it is. So, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's that's one of the blessings in Kurt. But if you channel that type of attitude toward, like, capitalism, it results in very successful Well, people. what a disappointment this song was. But if you channel it, if you channel it towards violence, it's that type of shit. You're not, you guys are not going to dance at the vendors, and you're quick to kill people. <laughs> yeah. Nah, no, nah, they're not, they're not, we're not, Jamaicans not quick to, it's just in that situation, they're always going to take it to the extreme. I will say that, the Jamaican will be the extremist in whatever the thing is, that's true. It's just true. I'm just, I just did not know that. I thought you were an exception to some kind of rule. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on the more calm end of the spectrum for Jamaicans. 100%. No lie. What? 100%. But that's why the shit that happens in this country doesn't happen in Jamaica. Like all this shit where like you got grown men twerking in front of eight-year-old boys and shit, that would never happen. That would never happen. Mm -hmm. So there, there's... Yeah. There's a trade-off to it. Yeah. The problem is that a lot of people, you know, you'll get shot for a lot of times no reason. This dude is angry. Like, uh, so as I'm saying, like I'm calm, and like I said, I would like keep that a secret. I wouldn't speak to Jama I wouldn't speak Jamaican around the Jamaicans, none of that shit. Like I was cool with, you know, I was cool with them, I was cool with Latin Kings, or whatever. But yeah, like I wouldn't let people know that shit, cause then dudes start beefing with you. It's like a lot oh, worse. That's freaking crazy. But okay. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I really like this song as an intro. It's a nine for me. 8.9. 8.9 for me. 8.9. Oh, Holy really smokes, my daughter looks like a grown-ass woman. I know. Gonna eat I didn't even recognize. I was like, yo, who's this in my <laughs> house, this bro? this woman coming in this room? SubhanAllah. All right. Dorian just said the same thing to me when I went down the hall. I was like, what the? Because it was he just looked like a big man in the bathroom. I was like, get <laughs> All right, guys. All right, all right. Uh, we will turn. Yeah, the Haitians would kill you before Jamaican. That's also true. That's why I didn't hang out with them either. Okay. Uh, we are coming back really, really, really soon. Reggae night from Mojo from Middle Earth. Vin out. I'm just going to ignore what you just told me, and I'm going to still stick with the stereotype. Sorry, out. Go. <laughs> Wait, what part? Oh, the quick to violence and all that. I'm just going to, you, you mean? know what? I, like, I would tell you no, some stories, yeah. but then I'd say, yeah, but, you know, it's my Caribbean mother. What, what do you expect? Yes, but I just felt like that you guys were just like, I think that what my aunt said, that, you know, like, what it, you have royalty sensitivities or something, like, I think that there are royalties, and I totally believe that, because the way that you and Dorian guys walk around, I just think that absolutely, matter of fact, all of them, even you yeah, all of you guys, I just think that, yeah, that's, that's probably true, but all Jamaicans everywhere, I don't know, I just... I don't know, well, I again, that's a stereotype, I'm not going to say all Jamaicans everywhere. No, but for the majority, that's just crazy. 
because I'm just saying we're distributed more on the on the extreme. Usually, we'll have the higher distribution of extremities. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand what you're saying. I, I do. I just, I liked the stereotype version that I had in my head. You know, chill, flip flops, bright I mean, colors. Look, we pushed it. We pushed the British to a détente. Pretty much by ourselves. That's a. Uh, you know. Shout out to the Jamaicans. Gang, gang. <laughs> We All right. The lights. They kept with the red and the green. And then we the shall background. return. Oh, yeah. I should. Do I'm dead. I'm sorry. <laughs>